Rod Marinelli gets his first shot at his old team. His defense not as good as the one he used to be a coach of, but can his offense beat what's left in Tampa Bay? That's the question. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Owens and NFL.com's Pat Kerwin with you, breaking down the 4-2 and two Bucks and the 3-2 and two Lions who are coming off a bye. And uh, Rod Marinelli, he spent 10 years as an assistant coach on the defensive side with Tampa Bay. System's the same in Detroit. Players aren't. Why can't? Why hasn't the defense clicked like it does in Tampa? Well, there's people in Tampa Bay have been running this for a long time, and they understand it. You know, Rod Marinelli was the defensive line coach, assistant head coach, but he coached the defensive line. Where he's got to get better is understanding, and him not personally, because he understands what he's doing. He needs to get himself a three technique that can get up the field. He needs defensive, because they gave all this money to Corey Redding, and I don't think that he's playing to the value that they have on him. Sean Rodgers has played well, but the man needs to you know, lose Sean a little Rogers, bit of weight. He needs to lose Sean a Rodgers bit of weight. plays well in spurts. If you watch the game tapes, you can't tell me, if you sat here, that he plays well all the time. He doesn't play with the motor of the guys down in Tampa playing the same spots. That's very true. One thing you may not have to worry about this week, though, is getting after a consistent running game because Tampa Bay last right. week against Tennessee, uh, 30 yards rushing. Uh, let's not forget, they don't have Michael Pittman. They don't have Cadillac Williams. They have Ernest Graham. Now they have Zach Crockett. And now with the trade from Kansas City, they have Michael Bennett as well. Uh, you know, But he's only going to be there for three, four days, so I'm not sure how, how big of an impact he'll have. Having said all that, what does Jeff Garcia do this weekend? Well, you know, I talked to Jeff uh, Fisher this morning about that game last week, and he said, we hit Jeff Garcia so many times, I was amazed that he was standing at the end of the game. Didn't show up in sack numbers, it showed up in a constant pounding. He cannot take that kind of pounding and make it all the way to the end of the season. They're going to have to force the run into this. They're going to have to get 35 running plays in here, and don't ask Jeff Garcia to keep dropping back, taking these shots. John Kitna can't take the shots either, though. I mean, the guy... Well, he's been sacked 27 times. Which, before the bye led the NFL is how many times that he has been sacked per game the Lions leading the NFL and how many sacks they are allowing uh in that game at Washington the one before the bye it wasn't the same Lions offense that had played the rest of the season so far why I you know I look at them and say you know this is an offense passing wise that should not be stopped but I the receivers aren't getting open people are playing to the pass they're basically challenging uh, Detroit to run the football and they're playing to the habits of Mike Martz until Rod Marinelli goes down there and says to March, you must run the ball more than you're running it, people are going to play to their old coaching tendencies and their old scouting reports. Can they run on Tampa, or is this all John Kitna this weekend? You know, this is a team in Tampa that stops the run with uh, seven in the box. They don't believe they need to put a safety down in there very often to stop the run, and they'll do the same thing this week. They will play to the pass and stop the run with seven. One of the things you might consider doing, and Detroit doesn't like doing this, is get in two tight ends. If you get in two tight ends and balance them up, but that's not something Mike Martz is going to want to do. Mike Martz will look at that cover two principle and see places to throw. He throws against it every day in practice, and he had a lot of success against his own players. You don't play two tight ends when you've got Roy Williams, Calvin Johnson, Sean McDonald, and Mike Furry. Those are your you strengths do there. You don't play two tight ends. Let's take a look at all the numbers. Throw it into the AccuScore prediction. 10,000 tests, all mathematical elements, 10,000 results. Here's what it has for this game. Tampa has been the better team this season, especially more consistent but the computer, 62% of the time, has the Lions on top. Pat, they're at home. Do they win? I don't agree with them. I'm going to take the Tampa Bay Bucks on the road. I like, I like Garcia and what he does. He's crafty. He finds players in the open field. It may come down to one or two big plays like he did last week with Galloway. Frustrated. Things aren't going well. The guy sticks with the plan. He finds things open. And on the other side, I see Kitten and those guys, when they, when they got held to 15 or 16 points last time, uh-oh, trouble with this offense. There's a book right now on how to slow that passing attack down. I'll take Tampa Bay. Yeah, just three points in that game against Washington. Uh, the Lions have won both their home games this season, but they've lost four straight to the Buccaneers. Mm -hmm. They've lost four straight to a lot of teams around the NFL. Let's see if the Lions can break it at home off a of bye beginning at 1 p.m. For more on this game or anything else, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com and watch everything else. We're Pat, the, the CBS Audience Network. He's found it. For Pat Kerwin, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.